Today, we're going over the top 10 abandoned places in Massachusetts. There are hundreds, if not thousands of abandoned places in Massachusetts, so make sure you like if you want to see a part two. Today, the list is going to start off easy and the spot's going to get cooler and cooler as the list goes on. I must say this for legal reasons, but I do not recommend going to any of these places. Trespassing is illegal and you can be punished to the full extent of the law. With that being said, the first spot on our list is Southworth Paper Mill in Montauk. The mill was built in 1896 to make onion skin paper for typewriters, which was a new invention at the time. Turner Falls Paper Mill was then abruptly closed in 1994. Southworth bought the mill in 2006 trying to continue the business, though the paper industry shrunk because of technology. The expenses to run the paper mill are up to $100,000 a month, and the company could not keep up. The mill filed for bankruptcy due to taxes and water use fees. 120 employees became out of work, and the company had $9 million in pension liability. The 178-year-old building is now abandoned and looking to be renovated, but all attempts have failed. Rutland Prison Camp in Rutland Nestled within Massachusetts, Rutland State Park are the ruins of an old prison complex where drunkards would be put to work, growing potatoes for more hardened criminals. The prison was built in 1903 to house minor offenders such as drunkards and the like. It contained a fully functioned co-op farm to keep them busy and productive. In addition to the prison-bound potatoes, the farm, which operated on 150 acres, of a 914 acre site also cultivated chickens and dairy cows producing enough milk to sell to the nearby town of Worcester. In addition to the farm facilities, the prison facility contained cell blocks, staff housing, and a water tower. In 1907, a tuberculosis hospital was added to the complex to treat the patients. Due to the fact that the prison grounds were built on a drainage area for the local water supply, the whole place was abandoned in 1934, left to crumble in the woods. Armstrong Factory in Braintree Armstrong's presence in Braintree began in 1934 when the company contracted with Stedman Rubber Floor & Co. to produce rubber floor tile. Two years later, Armstrong purchased the company and its 31 acre site outright. There were 80 employees who made on average 60 cents an hour and at its peak more than a thousand workers plied their trades in the cavernous Armstrong buildings. By 1986, 475 workers were on Armstrong's Braintree payroll. But six years later, the plant began to shed jobs. In 1995, the company announced plans to close the plant, eliminating the remaining 250 jobs. Tally Lauder was site manager when the announcement was made. High wages, site costs, the search for a friendlier business climate, all of the above were factors in Armstrong's decision to close the plant. Old Stone Church in West Boylton. In the 19th century, the Quinnipoxit River joined the Stillwater River to become the southern branch of the Nashua River in the town of West Boylston. Just to the east of the confluence of these rivers was constructed a magnificent stone church. From 1896 through 1905, West Boylston endured the building of the Wachusett Reservoir and the destruction of its mills and farms. When the Wachusett Reservoir was completed, this impressive old stone church remained standing as the last remnant of the town, which was once in the valley, but was now flooded by the new reservoir. On April 13, 1973, the Old Stone Church was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Mount Tom Ski Resort in Holyoke. Daniel O'Connell became interested in building a facility to keep local kids busy in the winter. In September of 1960, O'Connell began development of a small ski area with the vision of building something much larger. On December 17, 1960, Mount Tom Ski Area opened as a surface lift operation with snowmaking. Mount Tom's debut was enough of a success to justify immediate investment following the season. Mount Tom became a major player in southern New England in 1961 when a new 3,400 foot double chairlift was installed. Skiing was not the only activity offered at Mount Tom. In 1977, an alpine slide was added, followed by a water park about a half a decade later. Daniel O'Connell died of cancer during the summer of 1983, leaving O'Connell and Sons in Mount Tom under watch. Meanwhile, Mayor William A. Hamilton was pushing to have a casino construction at Mountain Park. Hamilton was able to enter into discussions with potential operators such as the Trump Organization, projecting 10,000 daily visitors, 9,000 new jobs, and 20 million dollars in city tax revenue. Mount Tom saw the casino as a potential boost to the ski area. Though the casino question passed as a local referendum, Hamilton lost re-election and the proposal ultimately did not pan out. Lyman School for Boys in Westboro. A farm on Powder Hill was purchased in 1885 for a new cottage institution. The new campus is called Lyman School for Boys, named after the Boston philanthropist Theodore Lyman. The institution consisted of cottage-style dormitories, an auditorium, chapel building, administrative and support buildings, as well as a working farm. Despite the fact that some boys had committed serious crimes, the Lyman school campus was rather open and resembled a preparatory school rather than a prison. Doors were unlocked and there were no walls or fences. Instead of iron bars and barriers, residents were trained to stay at the facility using a combination of education, honor, and threat of punishment. The school grew throughout the Great Depression and eventually expanded to over 700 acres of land and eight cottages. During World War II, many of the boys and employees were drafted or enlisted, leaving those few that remained to tend to the kitchens and coal-fed boilers to keep the institution running. After World War II, the population at Lyman had started to take on a tougher demeanor, with many violent, mentally unstable, and illiterate young men. Lyman saw an influx 
influx of older offenders who were involved in gangs, drugs, alcohol, and weapons. The 1960s were hectic years at Lyman as efforts to deinstitutionalize the facility sought to empty the school. In 1971, girls were admitted to two colleges and the facility was co-educational for the first time, making it even more difficult for staff to maintain control. Without vocational training or sufficient education programs, many residents were considered lost causes, never to be returned to normal society. Around 1971, the Lyman School was closed for good, leaving 265 acres of land and a number of buildings behind. Some of the cottages have been repurposed, however a few structures remain abandoned and in various states of deterioration. North Truro Air Force Station in Truro. Built in 1951 as a response to the Russians testing their first atomic bomb, the North Truro Air Force Station became one of the first radar listing stations to monitor for Soviet bombers. The station was decommissioned in 1994 upon the end of the Cold War, and most of the land was sold to the National Park Service as part of the Cape Cod National Seashore. The station is now a collection of dilapidated barracks, officers' quarters, technical buildings and offices, as well as a bar and bowling alley. The neighborhoods of family housing have mostly been untouched since they were built in the 50s. Belchertown State School in Belchertown. The Belchertown State School for the Feeble Minded was founded in 1922. The 845 acre campus comprising some 57 buildings must be called scenic. After its establishment, the school became the only institution for developmentally disabled children in western Massachusetts. Conditions deteriorated over the next few decades. Wards were overcrowded and attendance overworked. As a result, patients were often left to soak for hours in their own excrement. Sometimes handicapped patients had their teeth removed to facilitate feeding. In 1992, the school was finally closed after decades of reported human rights violations. In 1994, the campus was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Today, the buildings are all boarded up. Steinhardt Hall in Boston. Boston's Piano Row is a historic district known for its piano showrooms built in the late 19th century. There, piano dealers M. Steinhardt and Sons own the building, standing at number 162 Boylston Street. The six-story building was designed by architects Winslow and Wetherill, and it was erected in 1896 by company employee Alexander Steinhardt. Four stories below the ground, the building features Steinhardt Hall, a now abandoned concert auditorium designed in the Adam style, with fluted Corinthian pilasters separating round arches. In the early 20th century, the Little Jewel, as Steinhardt Hall was called, was considered headquarters for the musical and artistic world of cultural Boston. The last performance was given in 1942, as the hall closed due to new stricter fire code restrictions enforced after the 1942 Coconut Grove nightclub fire and a prohibitive cost of updating the hall. Walter E. Fernald Developmental Center in Waltham. The Walter E. Fernald State School has gone by a number of names over the years. It was originally called the Experimental School for Teaching and Training Idiotic Children, then Massachusetts School for Idiotic Children, and most recently, the Walter E. Fernald Developmental Center. The school was originally founded by Samuel Gridley Howe in 1848 and located in Boston. It moved to Waltham in 1888 and eventually consisted of 72 buildings on 196 acres. At its peak, it housed 2,500 young people. Originally a school for boys with low intelligence, later reports suggested that more than half of students tested had an IQ deemed to be normal. The school was renamed in honor of its third superintendent, Walter E. Fernald, in 1925. It was regarded by many as the finest educational facility in the field of mental health. The school has been the subject of allegations of sexual and physical abuse of the students. The standard of education was said to be extremely low, and the boys were housed in large crowded rooms. The students were even the subject of medical experiments in the 1950s, when the Quaker Oats Company, along with Harvard and MIT researchers, fed boys cereal laced with radiation tracers. A class action lawsuit was filed in the 1970s in relation to the conditions at the Walter E. Fernald School. And in 1993, a judge ruled that those who were treated there were entitled to a guaranteed level of care, regardless of cost, to compensate for decades of neglect and abuse. By 2001, 320 adult patients were living in Fernald, and in December 2004, Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney announced the facility would be closed. But Walter E. Fernald State School was closed and abandoned. Those are the top 10 abandoned places in Massachusetts. Make sure you like and comment if you want to see a part two. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more. Peace.